The year 2000 was shaping up to be a banner year for the Ford Motor Company. Profits were up, way up, thanks to sales of the Explorer, the best-selling SUV ever. It accounts for 20% of Ford's annual profits. Then, two months ago, boom, all hell broke loose. Word went out that the Explorer was linked to serious accidents, now totaling 101 deaths and more than 400 injuries. The Explorer was equipped with Firestone tires, a lot of them defective, and a recall of six and a half million of those tires was announced. Ford executives found themselves in the midst of a monster crisis, and at the center of it is Ford's CEO. Jack Nasser, who runs a company of 360,000 employees, is so deep into damage control that he's taken to calling disgruntled Explorer owners on the phone one at a time. Bob, how are you? It's Jack Nasser again. We were in Nasser's office when he called Bob from Pennsylvania for a second time. So you have now five Goodyear tires on your Explorer? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Nasser had taken steps to make him a satisfied customer. I got my new tires installed last uh, Thursday, I guess it was, and I'm very happy with them. We didn't really expect Ford to let us videotape a conversation with an unhappy customer. Nasser says he gets a lot of those, too. Oh, there's a feeling of, I've been betrayed a little bit here, A little maybe? bit, I'd say so. You've yeah, let me down. Bit. Have you let and, me down? And, yeah. and I think we have let them down. We should have known better. To make up for that, Nasser is running a mammoth crisis management operation, including expanded hotline centers, with 5,000 operators to take customer calls 24 hours a day. And you want to know if they have the Firestone tires. If you have that tire, then your tire is in the recall. When the crisis hit two months ago, Nasser moved his top engineers and logistics experts into conference rooms near his office and put nearly 500 Ford employees into various damage control teams. This is the data task force. They sit here analyzing data and tires all day long. We believe that's where the crack starts and then goes all the way around the tire until the tread separates. Maybe the only person more worried about the Ford name than CEO Jack Nasser is chairman of the company, William Ford, great-grandson of the legendary Henry Ford, and interestingly, also great-grandson of Harvey Firestone. There have been a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of days where I wish I weren't here. I don't have to do this with my life. I choose to do this because I love the Ford Motor Company. What's at stake for the company here? Leslie, nothing is more important to me than Ford Motor Company's reputation. And I will do everything I can, every waking moment, to try and enhance that reputation. But until now, he's pretty much left it to Jack Nasser to defend the company's name. I don't. It was he who took the heat before Congress. Why didn't you not let the Department of Transportation know because 1999 be about what was happening in Saudi Arabia? The issue before Congress was whether Ford engaged in a cover-up, whether the company withheld information from U.S. safety regulators. Ford has said the first they realized there was a problem was eight months ago, when a consumer reporter from Houston's KHOU-TV broke the story. Devastating rollover crash. How could a television reporter know this and not the company the, that it the, was happening the to? The television reporter, uh, they deserve a medal because they highlighted a problem. But did you know what she knew? Not until she proved it to us and showed it to us. And, and, and I say the You didn't data, know until she showed it to you? Absolutely. Now, not. how is that possible? Because you're dealing with very small numbers here. Uh, in a population of millions of tires and millions of vehicles. But you were being sued. You had cases. We, we had several cases, but this is an industry, uh, unfortunately, that, that gets sued uh, frequently, so you can't react to every uh, legal action. But there were other red flags. This internal Ford document shows that as far back as 1997, Ford executives in Venezuela knew that the Explorer on Firestone tires would turn over unexpectedly as a consequence of a tire explosion. There were memos in 1998 about rollover problems in Saudi Arabia. 1999, you were recalling Firestone tires in 11 countries, 11 countries. That has to be a pattern. You have to have seen that. Those countries, and, and the majority okay. of the volume, by the way, was in Saudi Arabia, a different tire than the tires that we're recalling now. 
But the ones in Venezuela and at least two other countries were the same tires. As for this country, you had dealer and customer complaints about the tires all through this period, and you had a death toll that was beginning to rise. No, I've, I've said it before. If we had to do it all over again, we would act earlier. We would have asked Firestone different questions. We would have looked at different data. But that's a very different situation than saying we ignored the signs. In every case, and I want to repeat this, in every case, when we had an issue anywhere, we went into the data, we looked at the data, we asked Firestone for any evidence that would suggest that there is a systemic problem. And in every case, the answer came back that there wasn't. We Why did you trust them? They've been a supplier for 100 years. We trust our suppliers. Was I think that even, a mistake? Probably. Looking back, uh, we should have, as I said, we should have asked different questions earlier. I keep thinking, your mother is a Firestone. Yes, she is. That's, that was her name. It was, absolutely. And, and that's why this is so painful. Did that company out and out lie to you? Do you think they knew there was a problem and were deceitful? You know, I'm not going to, I mean, those are strong words. But I will say this, we did repeatedly ask for data that would enable us to make the right decision and we didn't get it. The damage control team never rests. Okay, could, could, wait, hold on a second. Could you hold on, please? Dealing with the press is nonstop. Jason Vines, Ford's head of communications, is on a teleconference with reporters asking about Jack Nasser's testimony before Congress. Uh, they say they were assured by Jack Nasser they are uh, reacting to this news as if they were misled. They weren't misled. Mm -hmm. Without question, they weren't misled, and all the documentation shows they weren't. Vines and his public relations never team take the approach, never leave an attack, an allegation, or as Vines puts it, misinformation unanswered. A reporter asked me today, is this real world testing? I go, no, it's not. It's out of this world testing, because that's what it is. He's been told to answer every charge and to spin reporters, even on a Sunday, with his kids in tow. Once again, it's the bad Firestone tires not to explore. Vines hasn't uh, had a day off in 10 weeks, and neither has Jack Nasser. After 30 years at Ford, he got the top job just last year on the strength of his record as a cost cutter. They call him Jack the Knife. He finds himself in roles he never dreamed of, like acting. I wanted you to hear directly from me. Jack Nasser is the man out front in primetime commercials pledging... We will work around the clock until this situation is resolved. He says the ads have been effective despite his Australian accent and the reviews saying... He was so stiff. He was a cross was, between Al Gore yeah, and Crocodile Dundee. That, rea that oh, really hurt. The knife that to the really heart. Hurt. Mm. Not only are there the what did they know and when did they know it questions, but at the same time, they've had to figure out how to replace six and a half million tires. This is the logistics task force faced with that logistical nightmare. We've replaced 3.5 million tires Judith, in total. How, in how short a time period did you do that? We've done that basically in two months. Ford airlifted tires. They trucked tires and closed down three assembly lines to free up 100,000 tires for the recall. The shutdown and the recall are costing a major fortune. Half a billion more? Uh, Even more, maybe. You're, you're probably in the, in the ballpark there. Meantime, while his engineers keep looking for what caused the 101 deaths, Jack Nasser insists the blame rests with the tires. Mm -hmm. How are you so sure it's not the car and, as opposed to the tires? We have real-world examples where three million Goodyear tires on Explorers have been on the road for years and years, and we haven't had any problems. But government data show that rollovers in SUVs are much more likely to be fatal than rollovers in passenger cars. What about this notion that it's a lethal combination, bad tires, but with <clears throat> your design, that, the, that those two have to be together to cause these deaths? I, I will admit, uh, Leslie, that if uh, you, you do have a bad tire, then a sports utility vehicle is more prone uh, to an accident than, say, a low-slung sedan. But if you were to look at 
uh, the explorer's accident record, rollover record. It is one of the best sports utility vehicles on the market. Then why do we hear about so many more deaths with the Explorer than other SUVs? Because you don't have these bad tires on other sports utility vehicles. So you, you don't have a valid comparison. You're taking me off for a ride Let's in a go safe for a ride. vehicle. Yes, All right. we are. Nasser took me for a spin in an Explorer on a test track and engaged in a little spin control. The stability is very, very good. But isn't the, that an issue now, the question of stability? Um, Explorer stability is fantastic. To make the ride more comfortable, Ford, for 10 years, had recommended a relatively low tire pressure, 26 PSI for the Explorer, which some experts point to as part of the problem. Ford disputes that, but as of last month, the company began calling for a higher PSI. We're recommending 30, now. not now, not because we think it's going to make a big difference, but we want to clear up a confusion in the marketplace. So you're saying that you're not going to 30 because you think the lower pressure had anything to do with these accidents? That's our view. According to Ford documents, some company engineers were worried 10 years ago about the Explorer rolling over and recommended design changes which were not made until now. The 2002 Ford Explorer has a lot of new features. Those changes and others were introduced at the Miami Auto Show on Friday in the new 2002 Explorer. They widened it, made it heavier, and they added side airbags to protect passengers specifically in rollovers. Aren't these, in a way, little admissions that maybe there was a problem well, with the design? Uh, uh, yes, we've made it larger. Uh, we have moved the center of gravity down a little bit, uh, and we've added other refinements. You're introducing these changes to deal with the rollover issue. Every vehicle has some issue in an accident, and what we're trying to do is make it as safe as possible for our customers. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. The three assembly plants that were shut down for three weeks have reopened. New explorers are rolling off the lines. And back at headquarters, they're beginning to smile for the first time since the crisis began, even celebrate. Because despite the bad publicity, the accusations, the TV reports, sales of the Explorer have actually gone up in the last two months. Do you think you've turned the corner? I won't say that yet, no. I don't think we can begin to talk about turning the corner until every bad tire is off and replaced with good tires.